Hello there. Welcome to yet another episode. In today's video, we're going to make this three-dimensional recursive subdivision cube thingy. I don't know what else to call it. But yeah, before we get started, I really want to thank to all my patrons who've been supporting this channel for last couple of months. Also, I want to especially thank all the people who've been buying my latest product. If you are in need of high quality assets like these, make sure to check out the link in the description. Also, I'm adding like 30 more assets to it this week. So watch out for that. Now, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So I'm pretty sure this is a hacky way of doing it because uh, essentially this is a for loop effect. I released this effect on my Patreon like a month ago, but I was waiting for for loops, but seems like they aren't coming anytime soon. So I thought let's just get it over with. So here's a cube in my scene. Let's add a new geometry node. So the basic principle of this effect is going to be me separating the eight vertices of this cube, all the points and using those eight vertices separately with a single vertex in the center of the cube to generate a smaller cube. If that doesn't make sense to you, uh, as soon as I start working, it will. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is separate a single vertex from this cube. For that, I'm going to use a separate geometry node and set it to point. The selection shall be a index node which we will then compare and it must be an integer and equal to zero and that's our first vertex if we go to one that's our second vertex if we go to two that's our third vertex right there and so on up till seven let me just go to the spreadsheet and you'll see i have right over here one selection whereas over here we have eight vertex and here we have one vertex okay so the next thing that i'm going to do is add a points node and this points node will generate a single point at the center of our scene which is vector 0 0 0 and we need the point to be at the center of this cube which coincidentally in this case is 0 0 0 because the default cube is generated at the position 0 0 0 but the next cubes that we will make uh, the smaller ones won't be uh, at 0 0 0 so we will have to compensate for that and we can start right now for that what i'm going to do is take my initial geometry and add a bounding box node to find the center of a cube if you might have guessed is to average these values so i'm going to add them and then scale them by 0.5 now this will give us the center of the original cube and we can check that by taking this point and applying this position into the point and it stays the same which means we have uh, correctly calculated the center of the cube let's just put this in a node group press ctrl g and let's call it midpoint This point is generated at the center. Let's add a join geometry node. Let's disable the viewer. Now we have two points in our scene, but this one is way bigger than the other one. So I'm going to reduce it all the way to zero. Next node that I'm going to add after join geometry node is a bounding box node. And there we go. That's our first subdivision. This was our initial cube. And here we selected the vertex at index zero. We joined it with a point at the center. We created a bounding box around them. And to select all of them, press Ctrl G. I'll put them all in a group and I'll head back in. And I'll take this uh, value to compare uh, into the group input, which will allow me to, you know, alternate between the eight vertices. So now that we have the first part of subdivision, let's add the second one. I'll duplicate the node group and change the index value to one, connect the geometry and add a join geometry node. And there we have our second cube. Now I'm going to duplicate this uh, six more times or six. And there we have it. We have our first iteration of subdivision. Now to make these cubes scale up and down, I'll head back into my node group. I'll take my point. I'll add a vector math node and set it to add. 
I'm going to add a noise texture. I'm going to subtract 0.5 to make it equal in both direction. I'll set the noise to four dimensional and I'll add a scene time seconds node to the W. And there we have it. If I just reduce the scale or reduce the roughness, detail, And there we go if i look in solid mode we don't see anything because uh, they're all immediately close to each other but if i head out of the node group after I join geometry node i add a subdivision surface node there we have it if i increase the subdivision and edge crease now it looks pretty interesting now this is exactly why i said this is essentially a for loops effect because if i had for loops i would put a for loop right here and said if index equals to zero, index less than seven and index plus plus perform this function. And if I wanted to subdivide a, this smaller cube into much smaller cubes, I would say if mesh island index equals to one and mesh island index less than three equals to zero less than three mesh island index plus plus perform this whole task again onto the smaller cube. And it would be really easy now this scene shows the node tree of one of the shots i showed you earlier in the intro and here's the midpoint node group and here's the splitter or divider node group it does the same thing where it takes the initial geometry separates one point joins it with the midpoint create a bounding box adds a noise animates the noise and does this for eight vertices then i transfer each single cube as a separate geometry as well as i join them in this geometry to instance node group and export it as uh, the joint geometry i don't use the joint geometry node because uh, it would create a realized mesh which would be heavier on the system whereas using them as instance is fairly light on the system and also easier to shade in the end okay so let's say this is the first iteration of a subdivision done what if I wanted to do it again, make even smaller cubes? I will take the cube zero and put it through the same process again. The divider node group, which takes the midpoint, puts it back into the splitter and takes the geometry to instance node inside it here and connects it to the output. Now all these output instances, which is why this uh, runs really smoothly on a low end machine like mine as well. And in the end, I add a subdivision surface with the little bit of edge crease to make it look separate. I could also scale them down on their local axis. Uh, then I set shade smooth. And this node group is where I store some uh, random attributes for uh, on the instance as an integer. Uh, didn't need to, but sure. And then I set the material. Well, this is the chocolate effect, I'm guessing. Yep. I didn't need random in this one, but yeah. Hey, if you want this project file which goes from zero to three iterations, uh, after this, the node tree gets huge. But if you want it, it, the link is in the description, so you can check it out. So that's it for this episode, guys. As I said, you can find the link to the project files in the description. You can support me on Patreon. You could check out my projects on Gumroad. You can also check out my latest asset pack on Blender Market. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.